Welcome back. Today we are going to be going through lesson 5.3, which is all about solving systems of equations by elimination. So at this point we have learned a couple ways to solve systems and we're going to work on a third way here today. So when we are solving by elimination, we are going to solve these systems so that we find one point where they are the same. To start with, we're going to go through the steps to solve and then we'll do some practice with it. In this first example, we have two equations. The first thing we're gonna do is line those equations up so that the same variables and the same are in the same column, essentially. So we're gonna rearrange our equations so we can see that in this second equation, we've got an X and a Y, and then it equals a constant. So I am gonna rearrange this top equation so that it is in the same order as that bottom equation. So the negative four X is fine. I'm gonna add 5y to both sides so that the y variable is now on the same side. And now, if I write that second one below it, I can see that my variables are lined up in vertical fashion. Once we have that done, we are going to try to start eliminating. So in order to eliminate a variable, we're gonna multiply one or both equations by any number in order to create matching coefficients on one of the variables. So in looking at this, I'm just gonna choose the x's. So I am going to try and get it so that these two x values have the same coefficient. So to do that, if I think about four and five, they both multiply into 20. So I am going to multiply this top equation by a five and the bottom equation by a four so that I get a 20 coefficient on both x values. So when I multiply the top one, I get negative 20x plus 25y equals 40. And on the second one, I get 20x minus 32y equals negative 12. So I can see now that those x coefficients are both 20 and one's negative and one positive, which is gonna help me to eliminate those x's. Our third step here is to add or subtract the equations depending on those signs to eliminate the variable with a common coefficient. Now that those two equations have the same coefficient, I'm gonna add or subtract them. So in this case, I can add negative 20 and 20 so that when I do that, I get no x is left. I have a negative 7y, and that would equal 28. So we have those common coefficients that eliminate a variable so that now I have an equation I can actually solve. So our next step is to solve that equation for the remaining variable. So if I have negative seven y equals 28, I am going to solve that for the remaining variable, which is y. And to do that, I divide both sides by negative seven, and I would get negative four for that variable. Now remember the solution to a system is an x, y pair. So our last step is to substitute that variable we just solved for into the other original equation, or either original equation, and solve for the other variable. So we're gonna use one of the original equations to solve for x now. You can plug that y value that we got into either equation, so I'm just gonna pick the bottom one and say that five x minus eight times negative four, because I know y is negative four now, equals negative three. When I solve that, I get 5x plus 32 equals negative 3, and that would be 5x equals negative 35, so I get that x equals negative 7. So my final solution to this system is x is negative 7, y is negative 4. Okay, so we have two examples here that we're gonna work through. In this first one, I can see that I already have them lined up. So in that case, I don't have to worry about step one, lining them up, because they already are. 
So now I'm going to multiply one or both equations by some number to create those matching coefficients. You can choose x or y. It doesn't matter. So in order to make my x's match here, I have a 4 and a 3. So their least common multiple would be 12. So I'm going to multiply the top one by 3 to get 12x plus 12y equals 132. And the bottom one, to get a coefficient of 12, I'd need to multiply that whole equation by 4. So I would have 12x plus 12y equals 132. And what we should notice here is that, hey, these are the exact same equation. Nothing is different about them. What that means, if you remember from graphing, is that the same equation makes identical lines. So if they're the same equation, that means their lines are exactly same on the, on the same on the graph. So that means they're always intersecting, which means we have infinite solutions to this system. They're always touching. Okay, let's do example C now. So for example C, again, they're already lined up for me, which helps a lot. And this one, I don't really want to mess with the fraction in the x. So I'm going to make my y coefficients line up. So I need four y's in this one. So I'm going to multiply this whole equation by four so that the y's match. So when I do that, I get 2x plus 4y equals 88. And what I notice on this one is that we have two equations that are very similar, 2x plus 4y, but they don't equal the same things. If we were to eliminate here, in order to eliminate those two x's, I would have to subtract my equation so that 2x minus 2x cancels out. And I have 4y minus 4y. That also cancels out, so I have nothing left on this side. But on the left, or on the right-hand side, I have 11 minus 88, which is negative 77. Well, that's not going to work. That's going to give us something that's not possible. Zero can only equal zero. It can't equal any other number. So when that happens, that means that we have no solutions. They do not intersect. They are parallel lines. Okay, we are going to practice with a couple more examples here, but this time we're going to look at two equations that are just a little bit different. So now we're going to solve a system with one linear equation and one quadratic equation still using the elimination method. So we're going to start the same way. We're going to line up the equations by their variables and constants. What's going to be different here is I have an x squared in one equation. So that x squared does not match up with anything in the second equation. But then I have a minus y, and it equals a constant. So to line up the second equation, I have a negative 2x that doesn't match anything in the first equation. So I'm going to write it by itself put my plus y here, and it's going to equal, oops, it's going to equal 3. So now we've got them lined up. For this one, for step two, we're going to multiply one or both equations so that we match the y coefficients. In this case, our y coefficients are already matching. We have a y and a y, so they have the same coefficient of 1 right now. We don't need to do anything like that on this one. So this one is not necessary. We don't need to multiply on this one. So instead, we're going to jump to step three here, which is um, to add or subtract the equations to eliminate the variable. Since I have a negative y and a positive y, I can go ahead and add those equations together. So I'm going to write the answer for that down here. So x squared doesn't have anything to combine with. Up here, I basically have no x's minus 2x, so that would be negative 2x. The y's cancel out, and that equals 0 plus 3 is 3. So I have eliminated the y variable. I'm down to just the x variable. What's different about these is when I go to solve here, so. I have to solve for x, which generally means I'm going to have to factor, square root, use a quadratic formula, something to solve a quadratic, because we have an x squared now. So we know that to solve a quadratic, I'm going to have to get it equal to 0. So I'm going to take that equation and just move the 3 over to the other side by subtracting it. 
and get it equal to zero. And then I believe I can figure this. So if I'm gonna factor it, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative three, which would be three and one, and they need to add up to negative two. So I need a negative three and a positive one. If that's my factored form, I know that x is three or x is negative one in this case. So I've got my x coordinates and I know based on what I just figured out that I'm gonna have two solutions down here. I'm gonna have one where the x value is three and another one where the x value is negative one. So then again, we're gonna substitute each of those x values into one of the original equations and solve for y. So I'm gonna choose the top one. So I'm gonna say three squared, which is x squared, minus y equals zero. So I know that this is nine minus y equals zero. And that means that negative y equals negative nine. So y is positive nine when the x was three. Now I have to also substitute in for the other one. So I'm gonna say, all right, now I have to do negative one squared minus y equal to zero. So that's gonna be one minus y equals zero. Negative y is negative one. So y is positive one. So that is my second solution. Now on your calculator, remember that if you have a graphing calculator, you can check your answers after you've solved by elimination by graphing them. So you can graph each equation, find the intersection point and check your solutions that way. It's a great way to make sure you've got what you wanted. Now we are gonna move on to the practice problems. What I would encourage you to do here is pause the video, practice these problems, and then come back and see how we did them check your work, make sure you understand it. So I would encourage you to pause the video here and then come back once you've tried these problems. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance now to try the problems and we're gonna go through. I'm gonna do a few of them um, as full examples and then I'm gonna show you just the answers on some other ones. So let's start with number one here. I notice first that they're already lined up, so that's good. And I notice that I already have matching coefficients on my x's, which is great. I don't have to multiply by anything. So I can jump on this one right to adding or subtracting. To get 3x and 3x to cancel out, I'm going to have to subtract these two equations. So I'm going to subtract, that eliminates my x's. It leaves me with negative 2y equals 12. Sorry, not 12. Negative 2y equals negative 14. So when I solve that, I get that y equals 7. So I know in my solution that my y coordinate is seven. Now I can plug that seven into either of the original equations and get the x value that goes with it. So I'm just gonna plug it into this top one, three x plus two times seven equals negative 13. So that gives me three x plus 14 equals negative 13. Means that three x is negative 27. So x would equal negative nine. So that's my solution for that one. For number two and three, they're similar. Oops. So I'm just gonna give you the answers for those. Again, you should try them on your own, check them, but this number two comes out to 11, five, and number three should come out to infinite solutions. Those ones, when you multiply and rearrange them, they come out to be exactly the same equations. Okay, let's do number four now. So I'm gonna go through this one. This one is already lined up, so step one is good. Now I need to pick a variable to eliminate. You can pick x or y, it does not matter. The y coefficients are a little smaller, so I'm gonna to choose to eliminate y here just to make my life a little bit easier with smaller numbers, but if you pick the x's, that's fine. So seven and two, I need to get those to their least common multiple, which would be 14. So I'm gonna multiply the top equation by seven, the, or two, the bottom equation by seven. Okay, so that gives me 26x plus 14y equals 38 for my first equation. And for my second equation, I'm gonna get 63x 
minus 14y equals 140. So we've got our y's lined up. We're ready to eliminate now. So in order to eliminate 14 and negative 14, I just need to add them together. So I'm going to add these equations together. I get 89x equals 178. When I solve that for x, I get that x is 2. So in my solution, x is 2. Finally, I need to get the y value. So I'm going to take that x of 2, and I'm going to plug it into one of my original equations. Again, I'm going to choose the one with slightly smaller numbers. So I'm going to say 9 times 2 minus 2y equals 20. So that gives me 18 minus 2y equals 20. So negative 2y equals 2. And that gives me a y value of negative 1. So the final solution is 2, negative 1. Okay, again, 5 and 6 are similar to ones we've already done, so I'm not going to go all the way through them, but let me give you the answer so you can check your work. This one on number 5 comes out to negative 9, negative 4. And number 6 is one of those quadratics, so it comes out to 0, negative 6, or 4, 6. Number 7, let's go through this one. So this is another quadratics one. Let's take a minute. They are almost lined up here. We've got our y coefficients ready to go. Remember that our y in quadratics, when we have a quadratic in there, is what we're trying to eliminate. So all I need to do is move this 3x over. So I'm going to get y equals 3x minus 15. And for the second one, I can write it out. Again, making sure everything's lined up. So I don't have an x squared to line up, so that's where it comes first. My x coordinates go together, and my negative 20s go together. So now they're all lined up, ready to go. I am going to subtract them to eliminate the y's. So that's going to give me a 0 over here. I'm going to have negative x squared, and I'm going to have positive 4x plus 5. So now I'm down to a quadratic. I am going to factor this guy. So when I factor this guy, um, even though it's equal to 0, I'm going to rearrange it just so that it's equal to a positive x squared. So when I do that, I'm going to get x squared minus 4x minus 5. So I'm dividing everything by negative 1 to eliminate that negative there. Now it's factorable. So let's see, my factors that multiply to negative 5 and add up to negative 4 are 5, or negative 5, and positive 1. So my x-coordinates are 5 and negative 1. So when I'm going to write my solutions, I know that I have a point that starts with 5-something, and the other one starts with negative 1-something. Last step is to substitute those back into one of the original equations. So again, you can choose either one, doesn't matter. I'm going to choose the first one. So I'm going to say y minus 3 times 5 is negative 15. When I solve that, I get that the y value is 0. So when we plugged in 5, we got out 0. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the negative 1 y minus 3 times negative 1 is negative 15. That leaves me with y plus 3 equals negative 15. When I solve for y, I get negative 18. Let's do one more like that with a quadratic in there, just to make sure we're on the right page. So we are going to line these up. Again, I notice that my y values are already ready to be eliminated. So I don't need to multiply. I don't need to change it anyway. I just need to line things up. So I'm going to have x squared minus y equals 0. And then I'm going to line up the negative 3x plus y equals negative 2. These are ready to eliminate. So to eliminate the negative y and positive y, I'm going to add them together. That gives me x squared minus 3x equals negative 2. All right, we've got a quadratic here, so I'm going to get it equal to 0 to solve it. 
So I'm going to add that 2 over here, set it equal to 0. And I can factor this again. The factored form of this one would be negative 2 and negative 1. So my x coordinates and my solutions are 2 and 1. So if I write my ordered pairs, I know that one of them starts with 2, and the other one starts with 1. Okay, now we are going to plug those x coordinates into one of the original equations. Doesn't matter which one. I am going to choose the top one. So I have 2 squared minus y equals 0. That would be 4 minus y equals 0. And I know that 4 minus 4 is what equals 0. So when I plugged in a 2, I got out a 4. And then I'm going to plug in the 1. So I have 1 squared minus y equals 0. It's 1 minus y equals 0. And I know that 1 minus 1 is what makes 0. So that is solving by elimination. We'll see you next time.